Question for you. Do you ever get that feeling that you're not qualified to be doing what you're currently doing? Or do you find yourself constantly second guessing your own abilities? If so, then you might just be suffering from something more common than you think. Don't worry, you're not alone. In fact, I'm pretty sure that even your favorite celebrity or star athlete wakes up some mornings feeling like they don't deserve to be where they are today. Does this surprise you? Let's talk about it. What's up YouTube, your boy Fouad here and I've been looking forward to making this video for quite a while now because it's one of those topics where you're just like, I need to talk about it at some point because I've seen so many people in and around my life who've been affected by this. It's this thing called imposter syndrome. And I'm not even gonna lie, I've battled with this, especially in my professional life. And to a certain degree, I still do on occasion. The only difference now is that I've found ways to mitigate it to a point where it doesn't affect me to the level that it once did. But let's be real, it's a problem. It's a problem for most folks and we need to understand what it is, recognize when we're experiencing it, and know how to overcome it and potentially help others with it as well. All right, so let's ground ourselves first real quick uh, and first define what it is. Imposter syndrome is defined as a psychological pattern in which people doubt their skills, accomplishments, or experiences and have internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Now this can affect people from all walks of life, regardless of their age, gender, or profession. You know that little inner voice in your head sometimes that says stuff like, you're not good enough, you shouldn't be here, or you're not as qualified as everyone else to be doing this? Yeah, that's a form of imposter syndrome. I know that it may feel like you're the only one going through this or having these thoughts of being an imposter, but studies have actually shown that this affects up to 70% of all people at some point in their lives. Crazy, right? That's like almost everybody we know and interact with on a daily basis. Surprisingly, it often affects those who you would least expect and those who seem to have everything in order. Weird, right? Take this in. People like Albert Einstein, Serena Williams, Jennifer Lopez, and Tom Hanks are some of the most successful people in their crafts, but all have suffered from imposter syndrome. You could be like the most cool, calm, and collected individual who everyone admires and strives to be, but you could also feel like a complete imposter at the same time. So let's dig a little further and talk about some of the signs of having imposter syndrome. Well, there are several, and some might actually surprise you. Some of these signs include, but are not limited to, feeling like a fraud, having self-doubt, having the fear of failure, perfectionism, and believe it or not, overworking. People who experience imposter syndrome tend to underestimate their abilities and overestimate the abilities of others. It's like you get recognized for the great work you've done, but then say something like, oh, I got lucky. That's one I was guilty of until one of my leaders at work pulled me aside one day and said, Fuad, you need to give yourself some credit because you've worked extremely hard and were deliberate in your actions. I would also look at other people around me and feel like they were much more talented or more strategic than I was when in reality, it was a pretty even playing field with regards to our skills and competencies. So again, I was underestimating my abilities and overestimating the abilities of others around me all the time. That's something that I needed to recognize and put a stop to. Now what's interesting is that studies have shown that imposter syndrome disproportionately affects minorities and people of color. In a survey that was done of tech industry employees, 60% of women and 71% of people of color reported experiencing this in the workplace. This could be due to systemic oppression, discrimination, and lack of representation in their fields. Personally, while working in tech, I saw firsthand the lack of representation, especially in senior leadership roles, which was obviously disheartening. Just imagine how many people have doubted their own abilities to do a job effectively at a high level 
just because there weren't people who looked like them in those positions. This is something that companies have been trying to address for the past few years with diversity initiatives, but in my opinion, the progress has been way too slow. When you really think about it, when you're the first person in your family to do many things, first to graduate from university, first to have a high paying career, or just the first to buy property, it's tough because there isn't a training program for that. When that's your reality, it's easy to understand why you would feel like you don't belong or why you would underestimate your own abilities. But the good news is that there is light at the end of the tunnel and you can overcome this feeling. So how do we overcome imposter syndrome? I want you to know that this thing is treatable and that you can overcome it. I wanna share five strategies that you can use today, not this year, not in six months, today, that can help you overcome this feeling of imposter syndrome. So what are they? Let's dive in. Number one, recognize your strengths. It's important to identify your strengths and acknowledge your accomplishments. This will go a long way, trust me. Get a pen and paper out or open your digital notepad and make a list of your accomplishments and remind yourself of them often. You did that, with the grace of God, of course, but you get my point. You have a ton of strengths and achievements, and it's important to give yourself some credit. Number two, talk to someone. Speak to someone you trust, like a friend, a therapist, or anyone else that you'd want to share this with, and let them know how you're feeling. Sometimes, just talking about it can help you gain perspective and feel less alone. What worked for me was to talk to a core group of friends and leaders at work. I gained a ton of perspective and realized that lots of people have these same thoughts and it was completely normal. What really blew my mind was that some senior leaders shared their own battles with imposter syndrome. Obviously on a different level because, you know, there's levels to this. <laughs> Three, reframe negative thoughts. When you have negative thoughts, as cliche as it sounds, try to reframe them in a positive light. For example, instead of thinking, I'm not good enough, try thinking, I'm still learning and that's okay. Reframing it this way will help develop a more positive outlook on life. By focusing on the positive aspects of the situation, you can increase your sense of hope and optimism, which is gonna be key. Also, it just makes for better problem solving. Negative thoughts make it super difficult to think clearly and find actual solutions to problems that you're working on. Number four, take action. It's important to take small steps towards your goals, even if it's just one step at a time. By taking action, you're proving to yourself that you're capable of achieving your goals. Now, our goals can sometimes seem too large or overwhelming for us, which is a good thing because you wanna set big enough goals that stretch you and are meaningful. Breaking down the big goal down to micro goals can make it more manageable and less overwhelming, which will increase your chances of success in the long run. And last but not least, number five, embrace failure. Failure is a natural part of the learning process. It's important to embrace your failures and use them as opportunities to learn and grow. One simple and relatable example of embracing failure is learning how to ride a bike. When you first start learning, it's common to fall off the bike multiple times. However, if you're willing to embrace the possibility of failure, you can pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, and get back on the bike and try again. By embracing the possibility of failure, you can become more resilient, persistent, and ultimately more successful. All right. I hope you found some value in this, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel and helping your boy out with that algorithm thing. Please like this video as well, because apparently that helps too. Go figure. Okay, that's it for today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go stare at myself in the mirror and give myself a pep talk, because sometimes you just need to be your own hype man. You know what I mean? I'll see you on the next video. Peace.